Hey everyone, and welcome to day 14 of our RV10 build. Today is our first full day working on the horizontal stabilizer. No, you have not missed a video. We have not finished the rudder, uh, but if you remember from an earlier video, we had two parts that we reordered on the rudder. So that is now on pause while we wait for those to come in and we are moving forward and getting started on the horizontal stabilizer. So let's get started. First thing on the agenda for me today was trying to work on our workbench there that I built. And for some reason today we felt like it was a little bit wobbly. So I um, set about trying to work on a new um, center beam there between the two um, foldable pairs of legs on either side, just to see if I could make it a little bit more stable to make it a sturdier workspace. Not sure what suddenly happened, but I happened to have an extra piece of two by four. So that's what I got to working on trying to uh, just help make sure that it felt just a little bit more stable. Moving on. There are a lot of identical parts here, especially those eight matching brackets that you have. So it's really important to make sure that you label each of them as well as the, um, the spar so that you know which one goes in which location. So for example, we labeled each pair of brackets one to four, and then in the, each pair we labeled one left and one right, and then we had labeled on the spar um, one, two, three, and four, corresponding to where each pair was, so that we knew which pair went where, and then we knew which one was left and right because we'd indicated on the spar which side was the left and the right. Um, just again, to help make sure once you've gone through all this work that you know exactly where each of these parts goes and don't have any problems when you're done ripping it apart and deburring it, trying to figure out where to put everything back. It's important to do this not just on these identical parts, also on, for example, the doubler, make sure that you're labeling you know, the left and the right side so that you know, same thing, which way goes onto the spar. Because on, on that piece, for example, with a doubler, you could flip it backwards and forwards, and it looks the same, but that's one way is how you drilled it, and the other way isn't. So again, also from previous experience, make sure that you, I would really make sure that you um, label everything when you Clico it together. Uh, instead of trying to wait until the very end before you take them off just because you would hate to forget and now you're stuck trying to figure out where everything went. It's just really easy to try and get in the habit of marking it beforehand so you don't have an oopsie. Uh, in the tight spaces like around the brackets, we found it was a little bit easier to put the Clicos on uh, one side and then drill from the opposite side or rather make sure the Clicos the long part of the Clicos were sticking out of the end opposite the one we were drilling on um, otherwise the Clicos would sometimes get in the way of the drill and this is where having the little wood blocks that I've talked about before is really handy because then with those little Clicos sticking out on the back, um, we were able to use the little wood blocks to just kind of prop the part up so that it wasn't resting on the Clicos um, and just causing any damage there. Another option, instead of doing that where you'd have the Clicos on the opposite side from what you're drilling would be to use a longer drill bit. At the time, um, the only longer ones that we had were 12 inches long, which was a little bit overkill. And you know, it does get be a little bit awkward to work with when they're that long. But um, we've since bought six inch long, 30 and 40 drill bits. And those have come in handy. Again, it's just, it's nice when you get into some of these little bit tighter areas to have a, a longer bit than the normal one, but not so long as the 12 inch where it feels a little bit um, awkward <laughs> to be working with and to feel like you're really getting it in there nice and straight. 
Make sure when you're uh, drilling that you keep those wood blocks close enough together to where you're, the area that you're drilling on so that you don't get any type of a warp or a bend while you're applying pressure uh, with the drill. You, you wanna make sure that the supports there underneath are close enough that that part that you're pushing on to drill won't bend or warp. You want it to stay nice and flat. So you like you can be you should be able to see here where when we're drilling we move the two blocks to go there's a third there's two blocks that go on really close on either side of where we're drilling and then there's a third block that's just kind of to help make sure to prop up whatever the longest part is to just help keep it flat. It was also a little bit tricky for the first time having to get used to um, maneuvering this large piece whenever we had to turn it around because it's so long that you know normally we'd pick up a part and you can kind of just flip it over top to bottom but this part was so long that you can't do that so we had to figure out how to kind of swing it around the entire garage without hitting the camera hitting the walls hitting the garage door opener um, so it's just, again, it's part of the, the learning process, getting comfortable with uh, moving everything around, so. The wood blocks, again, another great little use for them here. You have all these brackets, you have to drill out those holes. Um, brace the bracket on a little wood block so that when you go to drill it, it doesn't spin. Um, if you had it with the flat side down, you know, when you go to try and drill it, it's natural instinct's gonna be to kind of kick back against you. So if you flip it and you have it upside down there where it's braced against that little wood block, now it's not gonna fight you. You can easily just hold it there on the wood block, hold the block and drill it and and there's, there's no fighting against the piece. You can just easily drill straight through it into the block and, and no problems. Tyler really loves uh, this little handheld drill that we got. I think it was at Home Depot that you're gonna see him here using in just a second. It was like 20 bucks, but it runs at a really low RPM and it's got a rechargeable battery and it's great to use with the little deburring tip when you have several different holes to go over, like on a large piece such as this one, or if you have lots of pieces that you're working on, it helps make quick work of it while still doing it right. Best tool ever. While Ty was working on the front spar there for the horizontal stabilizer and all of those connecting pieces, I moved ahead to another step in the direction so that I wouldn't interfere with what he was working on. Uh, and what that part was, was working on the left and right front spar attachment brackets which were another set of pieces that you had to very carefully measure and cut. Uh, a helpful little tip if you mess up while you're marking your piece that you're measuring with this Sharpie, a little bit of acetone or nail polish remover uh, will wipe it off really easy peasy. Easy way to, to fix a, a mistake or start over if you just get frustrated, you feel like the, the markings aren't looking right and you just want to start over. Just easy to wipe it away and, and try again. So. You know, and take your time, measure twice, cut once, right? Um, I might be a little bit anal with all of this, but we are talking about measuring and cutting parts to go on an actual plane, so yeah, I take my time. Um, and I mean, and you'll see here, I mean, I am definitely taking my time working on getting this measured just right. And it can be a little bit tricky because in order to mark all of the cuts and the um, center points for the drill, the holes that you're gonna have to drill into it, you need to mark on the flat sides of this, um, this L-shaped bracket. And the thing about doing that is it would be easier when you're trying to cut it than on the bandsaw if you had it with that flat side down and flush with the table of the bandsaw to push it across so um, but if you did that that covers up all the markings that you've drawn on the back side and that obviously not you're stuck so this is where having again those little scrap bits of wood can come in really handy uh, because then you can help 
brace the bracket onto some of those wood blocks to help you to actually then push it through like upside down basically on the bandsaw. What I mean by that is instead of the flat part being flush to the, the table, you would have it where the curved L inside of that L shaped bracket is down, but it's supported now on the wood blocks. I'll get into that more when I'm actually cutting it. I don't know, I don't remember if I have a video of me actually cutting it, but hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better and, and make sense. You can kind of see me here um, playing around with the different parts of, the different pieces of wood I have trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I want to do this? Which, which piece of wood do I want to work with? It's going to help um, and be the right size to help support it. But I'll get into that when I actually cut it. So there you have it, our first full day that we spent dedicated to the horizontal stabilizer. We, we had kind of dabbled a little bit in um, some of the parts. I think in the last video, like Tyler was uh, deburring some of the bigger pieces, but this was our first full day working on the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And make sure to hit that little bell icon so you get notifications every time I post a new video. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, be sure to leave me a message down below.